Gonna give you guys a little update on the 401. We uh, took the intake off. There's a bunch of carbon in there. I mean, it was bad. And uh, you see a piston's out of it. We found some imperfections in the cylinder walls, and uh, I've pretty much decided to just take this whole thing apart, clean it out. Here's a close-up of a rod. You can see it's a forged rod by the uh, grind line. And uh, there's the crank, a forged crank. And that first rod we took off was standard, and the block is standard, hasn't been bored out. So we got a good core here. Imagine this uh, this motor is well over 100,000 miles on it since any machine work's been done. Here's the timing change, there's a ton of slack in that. Here is the worst piston. You can see uh, there's a bunch of grit in it. This cylinder actually had some rust in it, some water got into it somehow, but it's not that bad. We've already honed it out. And uh, there's really no way around running this engine without cleaning it up. I didn't want the engine to wreck itself. I was going to show you guys a little difference on this 401 block. These main webs, you can see the amount of material there. And we're going to compare it to this uh, alleged service replacement block. It doesn't have nearly as much material there. So it appears that that 401 block is a more sturdy casting. Here we got that uh, 343 motor back in the car. And we use it to mock up the transmission and get that all mounted in there. I'll show you what I did for that. We figured out where the trans mount was going to land and uh, we matched up the cross member to that. We used the same cross member and uh, ended up moving it back about four inches. We had to space it down about half an inch because it was uh, just touching the shifter. These plates you see here are three inch wide by eight inch long by half inch thick. And we have them bolted in the front and welded in the back on both sides. And the cross member uh, bolt holes were drilled and tapped. We went this direction because uh, this plate can easily be removed and you can go back to the original type trans if you want to. The uh, trans is a little shorter, so we had a new drive shaft made. The measurement the uh, drive shaft place had us take was from the end of the output shaft to the uh, bolt hole on the pinion yoke. This face right here. Here is the new drive shaft. You can see it's a little bit longer. And they actually used uh, a little bit thicker tubing than what was on this Turbo 400 drive shaft, and thicker wall as well. And with the weights on it, you can uh, see that it's balanced. They basically sized it so the output shaft is going to end right here. There's going to be about three quarters of an inch play uh, between that and the slip yoke. The reason for that three quarters of an inch between the end of the output shaft and the slip yoke is for when the suspension gets compressed. Here's a look at the uh, test fit for paint. Here's a look at the uh, painted drive shaft installed. Here's a look at some homemade linkage. The ears were cut off that uh, original shifter piece that was on the trans and a tab was welded on it. And we measured the length and made the rod. What do you guys think of this paint job? Should I go with this? A lot of people actually like them stripes angled back. Anyway, the trans is installed now, linkage works great, and the next step is actually get this block out of here now. And the 401's at the machine shop, and I'm really on the fence on exactly what I'm all going to do to it at this point. So anything's possible, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.